Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official multi-purpose stadium rankings where I rank all of the major multi-purpose stadiums from worst to best. And guys, when I was compiling this list, you can see the stadiums that are going to be involved in these rankings. I'm doing stadiums that are mainly multi-purpose, remembered as multi-purpose stadiums. We're not going to include the first Yankee Stadium. We're not including Wrigley Field. Those are the stadiums that I am ranking. There's 23 of them. So let's kick it off with the worst multi-purpose stadium ever. And it has to be Exhibition Stadium. Even the name, it's an exhibition. It's just not a good stadium. But when it comes to this one, it's the baseball. Oh my God. They don't even have movable seating. The right field stands just don't exist. The right field stands are basically the 20 yard line. It is so bad. And and overall, just the seating of it. It has to be last because it's not even movable. They don't even make an attempt at this supposed multi-purpose stadium. When you look at the football aspect of it, it's just really bare bones. So it comes in at 23, last place for me on the list. Moving to 22, it is the Kingdom. Just really super obnoxious, super desolate, damp dome in Seattle with a huge upper deck, massive walls of seating. It's that old multi-purpose design. Not only did this stadium host NFL and MLB events, the Seattle Supersonics played here as well. It is terrible. Again, it's just huge. It looks so desolate and damp and just there's no energy about it. I think because it's a dome and there's no natural light, I decided to rank it at number 22 on the list. At number 21, it is the LA Memorial Coliseum. This is just not meant to be a multi-purpose stadium. So the left field was so shallow, they had to put an extension net up as kind of an extra wall so there weren't easy home runs hit out to left field. It's just a massive wall and bowl of seating. It is a coliseum, I understand that. And it did get a very impressive renovation getting ready for the Olympics there, but I am just ranking the multi-purpose aspect of it. And the LA Memorial Coliseum for baseball is just so horrific. I've got it ranked at 21. At number 20, it is Olympic Stadium. It has a disgusting, disturbing, retractable roof that was supposed to be this great new technology. It doesn't even work. It hadn't worked there since like the 80s. It's just your typical circular approach like any multi-purpose stadium, but because it became a de facto dome, and honestly, I might have even moved it lower if the retractable roof worked because the thing looks like a freaking monster. It's really strange, but I've got it at number 20 on my list. At number 19, we're getting into the true cookie cutters, and it's Veterans Stadium. It is the mass wall of seating in the upper deck. That's why this, to me, is the worst cookie cutter stadium. I will give it credit. I do think when they changed the seating color to blue, it looks a lot better. But still, I mean, that thing is a monster in the upper deck. It's just a massive wall of seating. It's like there's five sections taking up one deck. It is so obnoxious. It's almost funny how crazy it is, but it is the worst cookie cutter for me. And it comes in at 19 on the list. At number 18, we're just going to roll through these cookie cutters. It is Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. There's nothing special about it. It's very bare bones. It looks really, really bad. I guess you could say because the upper deck is located closer to the field, it should be moved up. This is like as raw as you can get with a stadium. There is nothing to it. Nothing to it. I I don't even know if it has suites. I'm kidding. It, It does have suites, but it is really bad. At number 17, it is RFK Stadium. I am giving RFK bonus points because it is still alive. It has not been demolished. I believe right now they're in the process of demolishing it, but I'm giving it a little bonus points, all right? Guys, there's really nothing I can say about this stadium. It's your typical cookie cutter looking at it for baseball. 
I mean, what is going on? You've got the outfield wall, then you've got another mass wall. There's literally no outfield seating. It's just upper deck outfield seating. This is so sad to see, but I also will give it more bonus points because at least, unlike other cookie cutters, it kind of has an interesting design in the upper deck. Almost reminds me of the Carolina Panthers stadium to where it loops around a little bit. So we'll give it a few bonus points. I mean, let's be real. We're scraping at the bottom of the barrel with these at this point. It's going to come in at number 17. At number 16, uh, we're going with Riverfront. Try trying to think of the positive things I can say about Riverfront. It's by a river. I mean, maybe it's location. That's good. But yeah, there's just nothing special about it. And then it only got worse. Well, I guess looking at it during football, it does have a three-deck approach. And when it comes to the cookie cutter stadiums, they're always more passable during football because at least there's not walls of empty seating, right? So it does look decent for football, but baseball, obviously, it's just horrible. It's going to come in at number 16. And then they decided to remove like half of the upper deck when they were building Great American Ballpark, and the thing just looked like trailer park trash. I mean, it is disgusting. It comes in at number 16. At number 15, it is Metropolitan Stadium or Discount Dodger Stadium. If you squint, you might see remnants of Dodger. St just squint at it. It looks a little bit like it. It's just a weird configuration of different sections of seating. You can see what it started out as. Very, very nice little corn cornfield there. There it is during football. You got some nice snow. I mean, that seating is just way too far away. That is the left field outfield seating. That's about 20 yards away from even the sideline. You know, it, it's just a weird configuration of a stadium. It's very old. And then they do have some pretty cool abandoned photos of it as well when it went out of style. That comes in at number 15. At number 14, it is Baltimore Memorial Stadium. So this one has a really weird like design, and then it has random seating in center field that's never used, I'm guessing because of the batter's eye issue. But yeah, it, it's your typical two-deck approach. For football, it just looks out of place. For baseball, I guess it fits a little bit better, but even baseball, the seating is just too much. So it, it, there's just really nothing great about it. The one thing that you have to say is a big positive, at least it's not a giant circle like the cookie cutters, so that's why I had to move it up a little bit on my list. At number 13, it is Kansas City Municipal Stadium. Really, really old. It's got that, you know, upper deck design like Yankee Stadium, like Cleveland Municipal. For baseball, the configuration looks passable, although it looks like left field is in, I don't know, what is it, the parking lot? That's not great, but overall, it's not terrible for baseball. For football, kind of looks like a Wrigley Field type configuration. It's not the worst thing. We're kind of getting to the average ones here at number 13, so not terrible, but it is really old, so it's kind of hard to rank that high. At number 12, it is Cleveland Municipal Stadium. This stadium, the size of it, the shape, it was taken directly from Yankee Stadium. You can see the two-deck approach. This one kind of more tailored to both football and baseball while not sacrificing actual, you know, like a view. At least it's not fully enclosed. It does have, you know, some center field seating. The main issue with this, it's just there's too many seats, man. There's just way too many seats for baseball, for the Indians back in the 70s and 80s. The upper deck was routinely not used. The bleacher seating in center field was routinely not used. For football, I guess it's okay. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's going to come in at number 12. At number 11, it is the Oakland Coliseum. So I actually really like the original Coliseum design with the three-deck approach where it was circular around. It really gave off like a Coliseum vibe. And then they added Mount Davis and they just ruined it. Like, I, I just, I don't understand the idea of putting in a bunch of disheveled seats, even if you say, all right, we need to add more seats for football because we want to get a football team. Why would you just throw up like three suite levels and then a giant gouge of like 20,000 seats on top of that? 
isn't there a better way you could put more seats into that place without an obnoxious mountain of suites with a, a deck of seats stacked on top of it? I just don't get it. It was a terrible design and it ruined the stadium overall. It is kind of, you know, it's got some newer amenities now, I guess, so that's why it's it's okay, but yeah, it, it, for, it is the worst MLB stadium right now, obviously. It is the last main multi-purpose one. At number 10, we're entering the top 10. It is Three Rivers Stadium, and the only reason this cookie cutter is ranked this high is due to the location, I will say. It's a very nice location. The only problem... You know what? Maybe I should have moved this one down. You can't see the view because the upper deck is enclosing around the thing and it's just suffocating the life out of the poor stadium. Oh, it's so sad. Why? Why do something like that? Well, I guess that's what was in, making a massive upper deck ring around the entire stadium. The one other thing that's a little bit better about this one uh, than the other cookie cutters, it did kind of have like outfield seating at least, and then it also had like a club level with outfield suites and club seating in the outfield. So this one was a little bit more detailed, a little bit more extensive, so that's why I've got it ranked a little bit higher. That was the original design. If they would have went with that, Oh, it would be number one on my list for sure. Uh, coming in at number nine, it is Sun Life Stadium. So this one, very, very good for football. Fits like a glove for baseball. It is just a wall of those bright orange seats. And that's all it is for baseball. That's all I can remember when it comes to Sun Life. They did remodel it to Hard Rock. It's not multi-purpose anymore, but when it was multi-purpose... For baseball, it was just brutal. For football, it fit like a glove, so I'm trying to weigh it. I got it at number nine because it did legitimately look like an okay stadium, pretty passable uh, when it was football. The main design issue is just the, the, the fact that it's enclosed with the upper deck, but at least it is passable. At number eight, it is Shea Stadium, so Shea Stadium, kind of funny. You know, you have to give it credit. It's not all the way around, so it is open. It is the, uh, the outfield seating, it looks like there was more seating at my elementary school games in the outfield than at Shea Stadium. There's just one bleacher section. I, I, maybe that's a good thing. And then it's like you've got the scoreboard. It reminds me of old Angel Stadium, but... I'll give Shea credit. It's designed, it's designed like basically any cookie cutter, but again, it is open. It's not fully all the way around. So I do, I moved it up for that reason. And then the exterior of it, all those tunnels, that is pretty funny. That design right there. I've got it at number eight. At number seven, it is Milwaukee County Stadium. So this one, very similar to Shea Stadium, but I do like the fact that it actually does have legitimate outfield seating. You know, it has some nice features. The upper deck is not obnoxious. The upper deck actually reminds me kind of of a Wrigley Field. It's not the exact same because it does kind of jolt around and curve, but it reminds me of that slightly. Maybe also Cleveland Municipal. But, you know, for football, the configuration, it didn't work that well, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. At least it's an open stadium and it's passable. You're not going to be looking at mountains of, of empty seating in the outfield. That's why some of these stadiums are ranking higher. At number six, it is Qualcomm Stadium. So this is actually a decent stadium for football. San Diego really did struggle towards the end to draw fans, but I think it was solid for football. You know, it, it just fits. The, 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 it's not like there's any crazy bad views. For baseball, it is kind of a shame because originally, before they expanded it and added the football, it was decent for baseball. It really was, but once they expanded the seating in the upper deck, the baseball just became a laughing stock. I mean, you just don't need that many seats in the upper deck, let's be honest. But I will say with Qualcomm, it did pass as a usable football stadium. Baseball, there's just too many seats. At number five, it is the Metrodome. So, Metrodome for football, it was very bland, but it was fine. You didn't have to deal with the weather. It was indoors. That's a perk. And it was just two decks of seating, and it was right in the action. It was perfect. For baseball, 
you know, the configuration got a little wonky. You've got all the seats out in right field being pushed back. You've got the apron coming down and covering some of the seats. I thought that was clever. I like the Metro Dome in terms of a multi-purpose stadium. I know it was regarded as a dump towards the end of its, you know, time. That's obviously something that's going to happen. It is dated. The fun fact about this one, when they changed the roof after the snow collapse, they actually put in like a special you know, tent type ceiling that allowed for some natural light to see through. So that actually made it even better towards the end of its life. So the Metrodome, they did a good job trying to customize it for both baseball and football. Football, it is completely passable. There's a lot of good views. There's really no horrible seats. For baseball, it was a little bit harder. Uh, you know, they had to put up a plexiglass thing out in left field, but I still think, eh, it's all right. So I've got it at number five. At number four, the Astrodome. You want to talk about a stadium before its time? The Astrodome roof was amazing. The natural light feel when it opened in 1965. That is what they're trying to do with modern stadiums. Unfortunately, because of the way the glare came off of the ceiling, they had to block out some of the panels, and that really killed the natural light vibe of the Astrodome. Also, in a perfect world, you would really not have to expand the upper deck all the way around and form the dreaded circle. You know, maybe you turn that into like windows, natural light windows. But the Astrodome, the reason I'm ranking it so high, it was just the stadium before its time. It was really innovative. They were trying to do something great. I thought they had a really good try at it. It is limited because you need to involve a lot more seating with football, so it's hard to make it look perfect. But I have the Astrodome at number four. At number three, it is Bush Memorial Stadium. The only former cookie cutter to get a major renovation where they removed a bunch of upper deck seating and you can see those arches going around the entire thing. It was definitely the best cookie cutter stadium. It actually had outfield seating. It had a very nice center field green patch as well. That's why this one is being ranked so high, Bush Memorial Stadium. In terms of cookie cutters, it was the best by far. It actually felt like a baseball stadium. And for football, it operated like pretty much any, you know, multi-purpose cookie cutter stadium. Coming in at number two on my list of multi-purpose stadiums, it is Candlestick Park. And this is mainly due to the football side of things. You know, when you look at it, the configuration for baseball, left field is a complete mess. Right field, I guess there's some seating out there. And then you've got that massive upper deck with horrible seating in center field way far away from the action. But I just have to rank this at number two because Candlestick during, you know, when it was football, that big wall of seating, it was just such a great environment for the NFL, for the 49ers. That's why it's ranked so high. Very rarely do you get a multi-purpose stadium that you can say is a really good environment. But Candlestick Park for football was amazing. Baseball, when they put the expanded seating on it, it really became very hard to use. But still, I had to put it at number two on the list. And then at number one, the best multi-purpose stadium of all time. It's got to be the Polo Grounds, the legendary Polo Grounds. You know, the funny thing about this is if you looked at the Polo Grounds from an aerial shot and you just asked any normal person, what is this? Everyone would say, oh, that's an NFL stadium. That's a football stadium. Just by the way, it looks like the bathtub feel. But we all know Polo Grounds, due to the dimensions, it is a legendary baseball stadium. Very, very shallow down the lines and then absurdly deep to center field with the weird configuration, the monuments out in center field, all of it. It is a legendary MLB stadium. And, you know, when it comes to football, it's not really remembered. Again, which is funny because it really is, when you look at the way it's designed, it's more designed for football but it has to come in at number one because it is legendary, especially when it comes to baseball history. So guys, those are my official multi-purpose stadium rankings from worst to first. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.